This week, in the Move Pain-Free Family Table Call, Coach Mitch and I discussed lifting-based training versus movement-based training. Let's get right into it. Welcome to another Move Pain-Free Family Table Call. Today, we're talking about the difference between movement-based training and lifting-based training. Uh, last week, we went through three mistakes that people make in their training that lead to pain, injury, dysfunction. Those three mistakes were foot collapse to that inside edge, tail tucking, which is um, a hip thrust motion, and then rib flare, which is basically pointing your nipples up at the sky. And today, we're going to be talking about why lifting-based training actually promotes those movement errors or those training problems, and then how we combat that with our movement-based training regimen. So, Joe, you want to break down the difference between lifting and movement? Yeah, so you got to start with what is lifting-based training? Is it all working out, not lifting? That's probably what you're wondering. But what we mean by lifting-based training is when we're working out in the gym, working with weights, if it's not tailored to helping you move better, moving in your natural movement pattern, then it's a lifting based exercise, right? So for example, a hang clean, everything that goes on in the hang clean is opposite to what we see with a natural movement pattern. And so to perform a hang clean, then that's a lift, it's lifting based, it's not actually helping me become a better mover. Now, that's not to say that movement-based training doesn't work with weights. It still works with weights and still gets strong, still get big, still get fast. But the workout, the exercise is tailored toward helping you become a better mover. So lifting-based training is simply just, it's a lift. They're usually conventional and very traditional. And they don't actually train you to move in your nat uh, natural movement pattern. And most of them will train you to do the exact opposite, actually. So um, that's basically just like what the difference between the two is. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So when we are participating in the lifting based training, what you're going to see is your body will organize to optimally lift, which lifting is pulling things toward you. Um, there's weighted exercises that are lifting based and there's weighted exercises that are movement based but the deadlift the hang clean the whole goal is to move that weight toward you right you're you're thrusting your hips to collapse in your feet you're shoving your ribs up in the air that rib flare movement pattern to lift right but when we participate in movement based training we're going to be keeping our hips behind our ribs to keep our back long, strong, and decompressed. We're going to be using our feet with tension. We're not going to be collapsing to that inside edge. We're not going to be pressurizing the heel. And we're going to be keeping our ribs down because that's how we'll keep tension in our upper back. When we start to lose those three pieces, when we start to fall into the rib flare, the hip thrust, the foot collapse, that's when we get into this compressive movement pattern where your joint is essentially losing space. So your joint has space in it, like right here, to move so that your joints can, or the bones can move relative to each other. But when we start using compressive training inputs, we're going to lose that space. Now things aren't going to be able to move as much, which for lifting, that is great because we want to lower the degrees of freedom. But for movement, and it, to be able to transfer energy efficiently through our body, which is all movement is, we need that space in our joints so that things aren't getting torn up. Our muscles are able to work optimally and we basically just don't fall into the pattern of injury that we see in every non-contact injury. Uh, all these soft tissue problems like hamstrings, hip flexors, and the chronic stuff. Like I had really bad chronic back pain and it was stemming from just not having space in my vertebrae uh, because of my training. I was promoting the rib flare, the hip thrust, and the foot collapse, and it was just manifesting in back pain. So just some examples of how we would take a conventional exercise and then flip it into a movement-based exercise. We use the squat pattern still, 
but how we load it is different and how our feet work on the ground is different because we need to maintain tension in our body and we don't want to fall into these rib rib flare hip thrusting foot collapse issues so in a conventional back squat you have the bar directly spinal loaded. That's going to promote that rib flare right away because you want to keep that bar on a level surface. And then at the top of that back squat, everyone hip thrusts because the whole goal is to not fall forward or not move forward, I suppose. And then to optimally lift in that way, you you have to collapse your feet. You have to pressurize your heel. And it's coached that way all over the world but what we've seen is it's not optimal for movement so how we would change the squat is we'll we'll load it in our hands or in our arms because in my opinion if you can't handle the load in your hands or your arms you probably shouldn't even be working with it in the first place uh, we'll use three different loading techniques we'll use the landmine which is just the bar is set up on one side of itself so one side of the bar is on the ground or in an attachment and then you have to wait on the other side and then you're holding it in your hands from there we're able to actually load down and back with tension and then explode forward with tension and without falling into the movement errors we'll also use the trap bar because the trap bar is really just a squat pattern i don't even think it's a deadlift in and of itself that's another whole conversation but we'll use the trap bar because it's a hand load, we can actually maintain tension in our full spine. We can allow our hips and ankles to work together. And then we'll use the zercher squat or zercher loading, which is you're holding the bar in your elbow pits like this, and you can pull it nice and tight to your ribs. And then that'll actually tension your upper back optimally for loading a squat pretty heavy. Um, but then a key factor of all these things is as we're lowering ourselves, as we're descending, our heels will actually rise or ascend because we want our ankles and our feet to be organized with our hip action. When your hip is flexing, we want the ankle to be reacting to that because that's how we move. Your, your ankle reacts to what your hip is doing. Your hip reacts to what your spine is doing. So when we're going through this, it becomes movement-based when we're respecting our natural movement patterns. You can still load your body with a ton of weight in your natural movement patterns is the thing we want to get across to the masses, right? People think they need to deadlift, back squat, front squat, etc. But the way you're loading your body and the way you're moving that weight is really important. So we just need to flip the script, change it into a movement-based exercise by respecting our natural movement patterns, respecting the three pillars of pain-free movement that we've identified here at Move Pain-Free alignment. We need to stay aligned, keep our skeleton respecting the, the relationships between the bones, right? If we start to throw ourselves open, like open our hips as we descend and ascend, when our spine isn't rotating, you're just going to lose tension. You're going to lose, you're going to gain slack in the system. And slack is when everyone gets injured. Think about this is a really good metaphor. Think about when you're fishing. You don't want a fish to jump out of the water because it puts slack on the line. And that moment of slack in the line will either let the hook slip out of the fish's mouth or when the line gets tensioned again, it's going to snap. And that's the whole thing that we're trying to avoid in our bodies. We don't want our tissues to be slack we don't want our tissues to be going from tension to slack tension to slack because that's when the injuries happen so we need to maintain that alignment and then the second pillar i was just talking about is tension and the final pillar is access to our joints which is just space in our joints which i talked about a little bit earlier we need space in our joints to work and when we use tension in our exercise then our our joints will maintain space but if we're using compressive exercises like the lifting based stuff, then our joints are going to lose space and we're going to run into the chronic pain. Our joints are going to start breaking down, grinding on it, on themselves. And that's when we run into problems. And that's the things we're trying to combat here. Click the link in the description to join the Move Pain-Free family and have a seat at one of our family table calls. And don't forget to like this video, 
leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for more information on how you can make memories without the back pain.